Far away in the northern piney woods, there lives a storyteller named Maynard Moose. Every full moon in the forest, the animals come from near and far to hear him tell the old Mother Moose tales handed down so long ago. Young and old, big and small, fur and feather, the woodland creatures gather round and settle down on moss and branch and log to listen. Did you ever walk out one fine and furry morning to sniff the breeze and hear the birds go twerp cheeple when all of a sudden, pow, something would knock you down? When you would be scared and run home and feel bad and stare out the window and not know what to do? Well, this is a story about that, and it goes like this. Once upon a time, there was a large and obnoxious billy goat. His name was Bully Goat Grimm. He was twice more larger than normal, having bulked up in his youth on wild tuberoot, which, as you may understand, contains a abundance of natural steroids. And so he grew to a large and ungainly size. And as if that were not bad enough, he had an extremely bad case of random hostility syndrome. His favorite thing to do was, whenever he would see a cute little furry farf aminal, he would lower his big bony bully goat head and gadump, 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 pow! Over the tops of the trees would go sailing the hapless little furry mammal and come crashing down in a pile of bracken on the other side. And pretty soon, all the cute forest aminals had slings and crutches and bandages. Well, one morning when all the little bunnies and chipmunks and beavers and hamsters were bonked and bruised and hiding in their holes, the bully goat decided to go to the upland pastures, where he has heard that a wild variety of succulent mountain grasses grew in gay profusion. Now, the road to the upland pastures, it went over the river, and over the river there was a bridge, and under the bridge there lived a family of trolls. There was a mommy troll with three heads, a daddy troll with two heads, and a little baby troll with only one head. But they loved her anyway, because you should be grateful for what you were given. They were a happy little troll family. They liked to wallow about in the mud down by the river bank, and every Wednesday they would go to the dump and bring home large and useless rusted and rotten objects. And every night they would sit up late, having rude noises contests and they would all sleep in the next morning. Well, on this particular day, they were sleeping in as usual, when suddenly overhead, trip, trap, trip, trap, along come the bully goat Grimm. Well, the daddy troll, he wake up first. Who've that trip trapping on my bridge? And a dark and dreadful voice bellow down from above. Beware, beware the bully goat Grimm. Nobody better not mess with him. And trip, trap, trip, trap, off go the bully goat Grim. Now the daddy trolled the head on the left, it spoke first. He do that again, I go punch him in the nose. You can't do that, say the right hand head, that's a stupid idea. Who are you calling stupid, say the left hand head. I just mean, say the right hand head, with someone dangerous like the bully goat, you can't just go punch him in the nose, you need a plan. You can't just go and do something stupid like that. You call me stupid one more time, say the left-hand head, and I will mass your nose out the back of your face. Oh yeah, say the right-hand head, I like to see you try that. And before you know it, a left, a right, pow, pow, the daddy troll has knocked himself unconscionable. You see that, say the mommy to the baby troll, you better learn to get along with yourself, otherwise you'll wind up like your father, unconscionable as a muffin. Well, the next morning, trip, trap, trip, trap, over the bridge, come the bully goat Grim. This time, the mommy troll wake up first. Who's that trip trapping on my bridge? Say the mommy troll. And a dark and dreadful voice bellow down from above. Beware, beware, the bully goat Grim. Nobody better not mess with him. And trip, trap, trip, trap, off go the bully goat Grim. Now, the mommy troll's heads were named Bertha, Gladys, and Louise. I think, said Bertha, we should brew three cups of tea and assess the situation. Good idea, said Gladys and Louise. Now, I think, said Bertha, if if I may go first. 
Oh, certainly, said Gladys and Louise, and thank you for checking in about that. I think, said Bertha, that the bully goat is just acting out to get detention. I think we should displain to him that all the furry forest aminals are supposed to coexist in ecologistical harmonies. Well, thank you, said Gladys. Thank you for your proactive input, but I do not think the bully goat will listen to reason. I think we need to bake a big chocolate cake, and if he promised to be good, we give him the cake. Well, said Louise, there is relative merit in both of your proposals, but I think he will listen neither to reason nor to bribery. I think we need to build a big trap door in the middle of the bridge. When the bully goat come, we pull on the rope and splash, he go into the river below. Well, said Bertha, let us then take the best aspects of all three proposals and in a synergistic fashion combine them in order to... And so they talked on and on and on until one by one all three heads fell sound asleep because the effect of too much process is soporific. The next morning, once again, trip, trap, trip, trap over the bridge come the bully goat grim. And this time, the baby troll wake up first. Who've that trip trapping on my bridge? Say the baby troll. And once again, a dark and dreadful voice bellow down from above. Beware, beware the bully goat grim. Nobody better not mess with him. And trip, trap, trip, trap, off go the bully goat grim. Hmm, say the baby troll. Wait a minute. Nobody better not... Nobody better not. That's a double negative. Because she had been homeschooled by Bertha, Gladys, and Louise. If nobody better not mess with him, that means that everybody ought to mess with him. So let's see, how can I mess with a bully goat? And all of a sudden, a light bulb go on over her head. Look at that, they baby droll. There's a light bulb over my head. And look, there's a picture of a pillow and a parachute. And so the baby troll get up and dig through the pile of trash and garbages and find herself a big, fat, moldy old pillow and three raggedy old bed sheets for to sew together to make a parachute. Early the next morning, when the bully goat come trip-trapping along, the baby troll is waiting right there in the middle of the bridge with the moldy old pillow strapped onto her behind and a parachute on her back. Beware, beware, the bully goat grim. Nobody better not mess with him, bellowed the bully goat. But the baby troll put her thumbs in her ears and cross her eyes and wiggle her fingers and make the rudest noise she knows how to make. Well, this angrify the bully goat grim, and a thunder cloud appeared over his head. He lowered his big, bony, bully goat head, and gadump, 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 across the bridge he come. But at the last second, the baby troll turn around and stick her pillow behind up into the air, and poof, up into the air, sailed the baby troll. Whee! Up through the tops of the clouds, pop! And that the apogee of her trajectory, she pulled the ripcord and flap the parachute open. And she drifts slowly back down to the ground, saying good morning to the various strata of birdies and buggies and busterflies, and landing with a soft thump on the mossy bank below. Well, news about what that baby troll done done spread like wildfire through the forest. And pretty soon, all the forest aminals had their own pillows and parachutes and were making rude noises at the bully goat grim. Poof! Whee! Up into the air, over the tops of the trees would go sailing the happy little furry aminals, drifting slowly down on the morning breeze, saying good morning to the birdies and buggies and busterflies, and landing with a soft thump on the forest floor below. And before long, they were lined up for miles, waiting for a free ride. My turn! Bully goat! My turn! Now there is nothing worse than having random hostility syndrome and not being able to injure anybody. It was just extremely depressing to the bully goat Grimm. And so finally he just give up and slunk away. He slunk and slunk and slunk until he was completely away. And the aminals took off their pillows and their parachutes 
put them in a closet just in case. And the troll family went back to wallowing in the mud down by the river bank, and every Wednesday they went back to the dump and brought home large and useless rusted and rotten objects. And every night they sat up late having rude noises contests, and they all slept in the next morning. And they all lived happily for never afterwards. Except for the bully goat. He lived all by himself, alone and far away, dubnoxiously for never afterwards. So my advice to you is, keep a pillow and a parachute in your closet just in case. Learn to recognize a double negative. And above all, remember, nobody likes a dubnoxious beastie.